Grapes of Wrath Poetry Book by Gabby Verhoesch and Tyler Shepard, celebrating the Grapes of Wrath 75th anniversary. We would like to dedicate this book to Mr. Reynolds for putting together this celebration and for being one of the best English teachers at Northgate. Miss Lanaham, Mr. Reynolds's amazing student teacher. The staff and faculty at Northgate for their contributions to the school's community. And finally, all those who have struggled financially during the recent Great Re Recession, know that you are not alone. The Grapes of Wrath by Larry Hassaform. The grapes of wrath are grown and swollen, bursting in the sun, overripe on it and dying on the vine. Long, long past the picking time, the grapes of wrath make a bitter, bitter wine. West we come to follow the sun with our family and friends, blown along like leaves on a bitter wind. They've tractored down our homes around us, broken all the tides that bound us to our farm. Now there is no farm. The grapes of wrath are grown and swollen, bursting in the sun, overripe and dying on the vine. Long, long past the picking time, the grapes of wrath make a bitter, bitter wine. Thousands strong, we rolled across the, gr the great southwest. Me and mine, we suffered like the rest. Text says, Oki, if you see Arky, tell him it out in California there'll be work. But there was no work. The grapes of wrath are grown and swollen, bursting in the sun. Overripe and dying on the vine, long, long past the picking time. The grapes of wrath make a bitter, bitter wine. Mama, feed me, the baby pleads. She thinks it grows on trees. Sadly strange the things a child believes, sadly strange in the land of plenty. To have no milk, and to have no honey, to have no food. And there is no food. The grapes of wrath are grown and swollen, bursting in the sun. Overripe and dying on the vine, long, long past the picking time. The grapes of wrath make a bitter, bitter wine. The grapes of wrath make a bitter, bitter wine. The Grapes of Wrath, Ma Joad Monologue by Unknown. I've never worried this much about my family before we had everything we needed, and now we are doing everything we can to survive. We are even getting help from people we've met. We left with hopes of adventure, and it turned out that we were very, very wrong. Now our pockets and stomachs are empty, and the rest of the trip is still long. When we were forced to move, we had to leave everything behind. Now without our things, we are making use of everything we can find. I feel my family is falling apart, and I try to keep us together. No one else has stepped up to the job, and I can't give up and ever. I feel myself growing weaker and stronger, weaker from being tired, and as support, I am stronger. I ignore my feelings to put others first. Everything I do is for them, even if it makes me feel worse. This is harder than I thought it would be, with more problems than expected. All I have left is hope that the family stays connected. Chapter 1, The Land Looking out onto the dry land, the people stand. Mothers with their children looking at the men. The men who held their head high. They look on into the dying lands, the land of their fathers, and their grandfathers, and their great-grandfathers. The land that was their home. And as the dust rolls over the horizon, the people still stand, looking at their land. Men with hopes in their eye, and women who know they are not broken. Chapter 2. Nameless Man. I see you see the man walking down the street in pants too short and shirt too big and a brand new cap. Too tired to walk, he hops in a truck and gets a ride from a man with curious thoughts. The two men talk and we see one who's kind and one who's we better not say. Life stories are shared about a life in jail. And as they part, one screams, 
Homicide! Chapter 3. Moving Turtle. Across the grass comes a slow moving turtle, his large legs leaving a path of matted grass behind. With his shell dragging, he moves on, never giving up. And when he reaches an embankment, he mo keeps moving, never giving up. After all the trouble, a concrete plane separates him. A car passes, but swerves, and the turtle keeps moving. A truck passes, but hits him, and the turtle is stuck. He lays on his back, struggling to move, and yet he rolls onto his legs and crosses. He keeps moving, never giving up. Chapter 4, Home Sweet Home Walking on the dust cover road is young Tom Joad, going home to his family farm. But in his way, a man in rags, sitting under a drying tree. Old Jim Casey, who ain't no preacher no more. Together they walk towards the farm to find a family of someone long gone. Chapter 5 Money, No Money The greedy vultures we call banks suck money from everyone. But when the people can't pay, the land they were raised on is taken from their hands. Their homes destroyed by the sons of friends and neighbors. Their land ripped apart piece by piece. In seconds, everything they owned is gone. Nothing is left of once they what, what they once knew, of the land they loved, and the crops they grew. Chapter 6. Broken Home Standing on the hill, Casey and Tom see the Joad home, pushed off its foundation, tilting at an angle, fences gone. No one was there, no ma or pa, just a lean gray cat and muley graves, who carried a sack in hand, wore torn blue jeans and an old black coat. He tells them that Tom's folks have gone away. They went to Uncle John's, so their three men camp out in a cave. And in the morning, two are on their way, while the third stays. Chapter 7 Sleazy Car Lot Good cars, used cars, cheap cars, but no new cars. Get your car here. Families buy a Dodge to cross the desert, Model T's, Buick's, Nash cars, and more, for all for cheap. But what the people don't know is that they break down, and it makes it hard to cross the desert safe and sound. Chapter 8. Stories from the Past Remember the stories about your curious uncle. Now listen to Tom's and you may wonder why Uncle John's dismissed his wife's complaints of a stomach ache. And without a doctor, she silently passed, with her child still in her grasp. Killing the two, he feels great sorrow to see children of tomorrow. Now listen close, for Tom must confess to his dear family why he was away. They know he killed a man, but he has no grief. He claims it was necessary and would do it again. As we go on, the rest of the family appears, but with the same questions and the same answers. But we must move on, for it is time to leave and say so long. Chapter 9. Packing and Moving Look away from the cities and find the farms that are now being empty from all that's within. Families torn apart and moving west to find work and rest. Selling the trinkets that could be sold, I'll give you five dollars for all this here. And the people take it and move on from there. All that's left is to California. Cars filled up with no place to start. Chapter 10, One Final Look. Look at this here handbill. There's work to be found, but Majo still worries, and Grandpa agrees, that the people cannot be trusted. They shouldn't leave. But with Tom's wise words, they all agree to leave in the morning and go see. For life will be different, and they can't stay. They will even take Casey, and they all pray. Now say goodbye and take one final look at the home you once knew and just drive. 
Chapter 11 Land with no purpose When the farmers leave their land, the lands become vacant. But men still work on the barren lands, now invaded by animals. They crumble under the dust. The land has to meaning. It is no longer a home, just a memory in the hands. Chapter 12 Highway 66 It's Highway 66 and cars are lined up, all going to California. But no one thinks that it is safe. The car may break and people may die. Families will fight and money will run tight. Many wish to go home, but they seek the beauty and find hope. They keep going on Highway 66. Chapter 13, No Time to Waste. Their young Al sits in the driver's seat, guiding the trunk along. He listens carefully to the engine, so no trouble might come. Ma is there sitting next to him, and she says she does not fear what is to come, but only of what is already here. As they stop to fill up the gas, the attendant wants his money, but the family just needs to rest. Soon we see that Grandpa is sick, and as he passes, we meet the Wilsons. The two families agree to go together, and they leave, headed for wherever. Chapter 14. Unwelcome. People in the West do not understand what happened in Oklahoma. Those people seem to be damned. And soon they see a flood of people with family camping in the road. No one likes the migrant works. They fear them to the maximum extent. They wish for them to leave. It's their massive pet peeve. Chapter 15. Coffee Shop Kindness. It's a small little coffee shop on the side of the road. Route 66 passes and people come and go. On this day, a man walks in, asking to buy a loaf of bread. All they have is a dime to spend. And the waitress sells it to them, his two boys. Look at the candy, and the woman says it's two for a penny. Though since this is a lie, the women felt bad, and the boys were happy.